Back here on Lockdown Coyotes, Arizona takes a 2-1 win over the Colorado Avalanche. That's a surprise of that one, but they now have another home game coming up on Saturday. They host the Ottawa Senators, so we're going to talk about that game as well on this episode of Lockdown Coyotes. On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlik on this episode of Locked On Coyotes. We want to thank everyone for making Locked On Coyotes your first listen every day. We're available everywhere. You get your podcast, including on YouTube, and we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I also want to thank everyone for, um, well, especially you, Carl, and all the people that you brought in for filling in for me while I was while I was out for the last little over a week. It's been it's been crazy, but I'm glad you guys were able to fill in for me. Oh yeah, uh, it was a definite uh, adjustment. Uh, I, I want to thank everyone for sticking with and for for coming on and helping me. Uh, doing a solo so is, is not easy, as you know. You you have done this show by yourself before. Uh, it, it's uh, it's difficult. Uh, I, I'm glad to have you back, though. And I'm glad to be back. Obviously, those who are watching on YouTube can tell I'm not in my usual studio. I'm still in California. I'm getting some things taken care of, but. Um, I'll be back full time pretty soon, so we'll see how things go. But I'm glad to be back on at least for this episode to talk about a win, because yeah. the Arizona Coyotes won against the Colorado Avalanche, and like so, they played each other four times, and they've gotten points in three of those four games, including two wins. Yeah, uh, not exactly what we expected. Uh, one of the things that I brought up um, on yesterday's episode by myself, just kind of stream of consciousness, was. It seemed like Bill Armstrong wanted to build a team that could compete a little bit better with the Colorado Avalanche, especially now that they're in the same division. Uh, this is far from a skilled team, but it, it seems to be countering a division rival that is better than them. And that is really all that you can hope for in a situation like this. They're going to be playing the Avalanche a lot. They need to know how to play against them, and they're doing it. Plus, let's also put it this way. For some reason, the Coyotes just seem to do well with goaltenders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was another great game for, from Carol Vimelka, making 42 saves and 43 shots. Uh, he unfortunately didn't get, what, his fourth 45-plus save night, but but close. It's definitely close. Uh, and he was well rested from the four games that uh, that Wedgwood played, so definitely the right call putting him in there for against the Avalanche. Plus, how cool is it to say technically the Arizona Coyotes are undefeated in the month of March? <laughs> I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, technically. Let's, 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 come on, let's 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 try to be happy about something here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the Coyotes. When did they last play the Avalanche? It was right in the middle of Feb or right in the beginning of February. Right in the beginning of February, yeah. It was it was that back to back thing. So is it was the were the Coyotes undefeated to start February also against the the Avalanche? Yes, that's true. So for the second straight month, the Coyotes have beat the Colorado Avalanche to be undefeated in the start of the month. That's fun. I wonder how it is for the the Avalanche team to think that now two times in a row in regulation that they've lost to the Arizona Coyotes. I mean, once, fluke. Twice, uh, I don't know. And, and again, I don't think they're they're too upset about it because, you know, they're different parts of the of the standings. So, like, if the Colorado Avalanche are really focused on their losses to the Coyotes – they're probably already stuck in their head. They're not going to get far. Um, and they're able to quiet that out. But the next time they play, like, every Coyotes game, that's going to be, like, in the locker room. I, I, I doubt they're carrying it, like, in the rest of the season. They're focused on other things. They're able to shut that kind of stuff out. 
Now let's go ahead and take another shout out to, to the game winning goal. I got a very brief second to look at it again. And uh, Nick Schmaltz, what, <laughs> what is yeah. that? Well, was... <laughs> I was looking uh, and I think Schmaltz had five goals the last time they played the Avalanche. Um, I may be slightly off on that, but I think it was five. Since then, he has 12, or he has 12 goals now at this point in the season. So he had a phenomenal February. Like, even if the numbers aren't perfectly right, it, it was still like a really good, you know, start to the second half of the season. And I think we're seeing that a lot. We're seeing like players like Lawson Krause have, like, I thought he had a really good game. Christian Fisher has looked better on the second half. Uh, like, I definitely think this team has adjusted to, to, to Bears system and with playing with each other, like Keller Boyd and Schmaltz is a really good line. They have chemistry more so than the, the Schmaltz Keller chemistry that we, you know, expected. The two basement teams right now are just right now playing a little bit better. Yeah, which, I mean, I guess shouldn't be too much of a surprise because, you know, the Coyotes had a very difficult start um, and they did very badly and it all kind of evens out. Like, that's that's why it's it's best, especially in hockey, not to focus on, like, too short a time frame. Mm-hmm. Like, like if you just look at like one week or one game, you're going to miss a lot of the nuance. There's ebbs and flows of this game. Well, yeah, it's an 82 game season. Things are bound to be different. And obviously you can tell the first 12 games of the season for the Arizona Coyotes, as you mentioned, were absolutely terrible. And then they started to kind of like go on this roller coaster ride. And now they've kind of had that they're at the somewhat consistent level of, yeah, uh, I think that they are transitioning pretty well into a team that's going to be like a spoiler for, for some teams. Like the Coyotes very like plausibly could cost a team a playoff spot because it's a game that they expect to win. Uh, they're, they have the potential to surprise a team. And if that's a, you know, a wild card game, uh, a wild card team, Coyotes knock them out of the playoffs. Could you imagine not going to the playoffs because you didn't take the Arizona Coyotes seriously enough. Like that is the kind of stuff that causes a coach to lose their mind. Oh, that'd be absolutely beautiful to see like the, the Coyotes just freaking eliminate a team just because of how cocky they get. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and like it can, it could very realistically happen. We are getting to that part of the season where games mean everything. Like, uh, you know, it's not something that Coyotes fans, you know, have had to care about recently. Uh, you know, last season, sure. Season before then, yeah. But but they've they've been on the outs for a while, so like they can, they don't have those kind of important games. But they get to you know destroy teams' dreams with those important games, and that's almost as fun. Plus, they have the flexibility to have fun because again, with what thirty six points now, there's. Still, right mm. there at the bottom of Montreal, and it doesn't seem like it's going to really change much. So I'm just like, yeah, let's just have some fun. Yeah, and, and I'm sure we'll get to see plenty of faces. Um, last night, Matthias Michelli made his NHL debut. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was actually uh, I talked about it on yesterday's episode that we're going to need to talk about that at some point, just because Roadrunner Sky. I'm sure you have a lot to say about him. Uh, he looked fun. Uh, he, he didn't look out of place. He had a couple good moves, played with Alex Galchenyuk and Phil Kessel, uh, but definitely like shows that there's a lot there. Just It's his first game. You don't expect it to be like a massive success. Give the guy a little bit of time. Yeah, we'll give him a little bit of time, and especially like, but there is an expectation for the AHL's current highest scorer. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he comes in with expectations. Uh, just... Let's all make sure that those are reasonable expectations. Again, Listener everyone, the, the AHL is the second biggest North American hockey league. But between the AHL and the NHL is a massive jump. Yeah. So we gotta really th- you got to really remember that. Yeah. And, and, I mean, he has played professional hockey before over in Europe. But, again, it's a really big jump from European hockey to the NHL. 
but we we've seen it. I mean, Caravel Melka did it. Absolutely. Anyways, we still got more to get to on this episode of Locked On Coyotes. We're going to talk, start taking a look ahead. Arizona has another game coming up tomorrow. It's the uh, Ottawa Senators come, and it's also the Pride game, the hockey hockey is for everyone night for the International Hockey League. So maybe we can bring some of that up too as well. All on this episode of Locked On Coyotes in just a moment, but first a quick word from Carl. So I have a message from our friends at Built Bar, and that's, have you tried the puffs? If not, you're missing out on one of the best tasting Built Bars. Uh, The puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors, like the yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, again, always one of my favorites uh they're so good and there's gonna be one that'll be your favorite plus they're covered in 100 percent real chocolate that's chocolate everyone loves chocolate they're low calorie high protein so you can replace a candy bar with a built bar or a built bar puff uh what i want you to do is go to built.com and use the promo code locked 15 to get 15 percent off your order that's promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com so back here on Locked On Coyotes, once again, Robin Leonio and Carl Pavlik, Arizona Coyotes and Ottawa Senators coming up tomorrow um, for a uh, another home matchup. Um, these are the Ottawa Senators, Carl, are a weird team. Um, I'm trying yeah. to solve them. Are they a basement team or are they just like some just outside bubble team? Like, what are they? Uh, I think they're still a basement team. They're just a basement team that occasionally has some luck. There uh, go. there you go. <laughs> yeah. it, it's one of those games where I'm not too too worried about it. Um, it, it definitely has the feel of a uh, you know maybe like playing the Montreal Canadiens. Um, I, I think it's kind of on that level. They're 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 competing with the Coyotes for an, an overall pick, uh, even if. You know, they they have their good moments. The one thing that kind of upsets me right now is the fact that this game this that the it's Coyotes versus Senators for the hockey is for, their hockey is for everyone night. I don't expect a good crowd tonight um, because no. come on, is it an appealing matchup? No, no one no. wants to see this. no one wants to see these two teams play. Yeah, nobody wants to see um, the Coyotes and the Senators. Uh, in general, this year the Coyotes have not had the best kind of, you know, tr- visiting fans, which has always been a key part of of teams like the Coyotes. Like they have a lot of people who come down during the winter months from Canada, especially, um, and the northern states. That's happening less due to COVID restrictions and just everything that's going on. So yeah, it's probably not going to be the best crowd, the fullest crowd, but you know, I I've been to a couple games this season and even the ones you don't expect to be the big draws, you're still getting people. They're still kind of, you know, pumped. The atmosphere is still there. So hopefully there'll be, there'll be something. And, you know, with it being a big night with a, I believe there's a giveaway, like hopefully they're able to draw in people that way. Yeah. I think what would the giveaway? What? Did you say what the giveaway is? It's some rainbow thing, right? Because uh, for, for Pride yeah. Night. I think it was a rally towel. I may be off on that one. Uh, let me see. It's a matinee game, which is always fun. That makes it easier for some people. Because it's it's a Saturday. It's a matinee. You don't have to worry about anything. You can still do whatever you want to do in the night. Yeah. Uh, Although that also means you have to get up a little bit earlier. For those yeah. who are like me and like to stay in bed. <laughs> I mean, it's two in the afternoon. You don't have to get up that much earlier, but <laughs> I, I I hear what you're saying. Uh, you can start uh you can start pre gaming really early. That's always fun. Get like a, a barbecue at eleven, uh, crack open a couple beers and then go to the game. Uh, let me see. I'm on the coyotes Twitter and seeing if it says anything there. He doesn't say anything as of right now, I think. So, uh, 
it's possible I'm wrong with the giveaway. Um, I mean, it should be there. It, should... it just redirects me to Ticketmaster uh, on the website, which... Yeah, there's a lot of blue on Ticketmaster, so so plenty of seats available. If you have nothing to do on a Saturday afternoon, uh, go to a Kennedy's game. It'll be fun. Uh, Rainbow Rally Tell. Ah, I was right. I just couldn't find it to confirm. But yeah, Rainbow Rally Tell. That, first, the first 10,000 fans. So, um, Which, um, at least unfortunately, based off of where the latest crowd's going to be, that's just about everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last game I went to was Friday's. Um, and the giveaway was a really nice tumbler. Like, the Coyotes giveaways have been pretty okay this year. Like, uh, I have a couple of rally towels up there, if you can see them. They're, they're oh. behind the China cabinet. Um, oh, yeah, look at those. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, rally towel. Cool. It, it, it should be, hopefully, a, a fun game for, for those who go. Um, one of the rare situations where the Coyotes uh, may be able to pull out another maybe, win. Maybe favorite. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but I think the... Yeah. But uh, I'm excited to see how they how they execute their Pride Night. I mean, Pride Night has been a been a thing for the last several years now across the NHL. Yeah. Um, but um, see who they you know who they have as their team representative to drop drop the puck and do all stuff like that. See what they do because I think I see a lot of you know every team does things different and some teams literally do the bare minimum. Yeah. I think and, Arizona is one of those teams that does a little bit more. Yeah. In the past, the Coyotes have definitely done the bare minimum for Pride, but lately they've been a bit better about it. Uh, and just in general, the the Coyotes are, are definitely very open to to having you know a wide like swath of people come to games. And you know, if you're a team that's interested in that, you need to realize that like events like Pride Night should be big events for you you should be able to kind of like you know get together a group of people when i worked group ticket sales like that was all we did we targeted organizations we're like hey here's a night you want to make it super special we'll do a bunch of stuff for you and you know that's how you grow fans that's you make sure that they feel wanted and involved and just kind of as long as they involve the local community because some will be like oh yeah we'll donate money to the hockey is for everyone campaign. I'm like, okay, that's a national campaign. Yeah. The LGBT community here in Arizona isn't going to see that. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it definitely. I mean, stay local. That That's a, that's a good advice. I'd say in general, when you're a T te- when you're, you know, a franchise or a person like to stay local with your, with your charity donations, uh, Except for, you know, very well reputable international uh, charities. Mm-hmm. I just realized I said stay local when there's an ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe. That's not the right mindset. So right. it's fine to give for that as well. But, you know, for a night like this, when we're talking about, you know, pride, keep it local. Make sure that it gets to, to worthwhile organizations in Arizona. Absolutely. Again, I'm excited for this game, seeing how they rep. And again, when we, um, we had a uh, you know a big member of the LGBT community in Arizona on on my podcast just you know l- l- earlier last week. We had Lindsay Fry on the show. I just want to thank her. I didn't get a chance to thank you know go and say once again thank her. Uh, obviously, I did live when we had her on, but I do want to thank her again for coming on. She was fantastic, and I'm excited to have another member, so someone that focuses on that community, on a future episode. We were going to do it sometime this week, but. Um, you know, things, things get shifted around, unfortunately, yeah. but we'll get, we'll get, we'll get that eventually. So a little bit teaser for you guys. That's what's going to be coming up as another episode of the Grow the Game series. Um, but excited for that as well. Anyways, though, we got more to get to on this episode of Lockdown Coyotes. We're going to talk about predictions, how we think this Arizona Coyotes Ottawa Senators game is going to go. Once again, that game is set for 2 p.m. at Gila River Arena. Um, 
we're going to, again, we're going to go through the bet online predictions in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you guys about bet online because football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college shoes from all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, and uh, other odds, right down to to the uh, how the Olympic went. Uh, obviously, there's the Olympics are done now, but um, you know other Olympics that come up, you know, each and every other year. So head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. And speaking of bet online, as you heard me mention the tease before, it is time for our predictions. Bet online picks of the game. There is no puck line yet, Carl, because mm-hmm. that is not because it is too early. They usually post the puck lines usually either later in the day today or early to or early on game day. We're recording this again on Friday, so the game is Saturday. Um, so we don't see that yet, but they do have odds available. And based off of the odds, I'll tell you right now, Carl, the Arizona Coyotes are favored ever so slightly. Minus 102 for the money line for for the Ottawa Senators, minus 108 eight for the Arizona Coyotes. So just ever so slightly favored total points is at five and a half points. Huh. I mean, that's definitely an interesting one. I'm looking at the, the senators last few games. Uh, they lost to the Florida Panthers three uh, zero. They lost to the Tampa Bay lightning five, two, uh, not really surprised for either of those. Uh, they lost to the Montreal Canadians. Yeesh two, one, uh, and then they somehow beat the Minnesota Wild 4-3. Um, what? Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think the Coyotes are one of the few teams in the NHL that is not going to take any opponent lightly. Uh, I think they're going to want to continue like a streak. They just came in they're coming in with the momentum after being the avalanche so i think the coyotes are gonna win this one uh i kind of see it being a high scoring game too especially after like such a low scoring affair against the avalanche so i'm going for two coyotes for two coyotes okay um i'm with you though on the coyotes are gonna win However, I think this game is going to be is going to be under that five and a half, not by mm-hmm. a lot though. Um, I'm going to say three to two. You missed uh, yesterday's. It was a six and a half, uh, like points. Uh, and I was just like, I don't know. For some reason, I'm thinking the under. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be a safer bet to pick under when it goes that yeah. high. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially like the Coyotes in the in the Avalanche, they can be high scoring teams. And, and uh, again, I'm looking at the Ottawa Senators, and they have been shut out a lot. Um, shut out back to back against the Penguins and the the Bruins uh, earlier in February, but they also have a, a couple games where they've scored four goals. So, like, I can see them putting up offense. Uh, I could see this being one of those fun punch each other in the face kind of goal games where they just tons of goals. But so I'm thinking the over, but I think I, I think things are going to be, you know, not too too crazy. No, nah, to me, I'm just imagining another boring game because these two, like, I'm not saying that just because they're two bad teams, but they're just teams that just have just just less talent. Yeah. Um, and it's just gonna be, unfortunately, like, well, and again, and now I guess I had to make an example. And obviously, this was a different example because these two teams didn't play each other, didn't play a game for like ten days, and that was the. The Coyotes were just Sharks game back at the end of December because that was like a freaking eight, seven freaking, I don't even know what to call that game. Yeah. Because both teams were terrible, but they still scored a lot. 
Yeah, and, and I think that's where we can we can kind of get like a more interesting game because, like, when the Coyotes' top line is matching up against the Avalanche's top line, the Coyotes are mostly trying to not get scored on. Um, but when the Coyotes' top line finds themselves against the Senators' like third line. Like that's that's a gulf in talent, and you know if they can find a way to exploit it, which we have seen Nick Schmaltz, we've seen Barrett Hayton, we've seen like these players like walk around defensemen on better teams. Like you think they should be able to make a little bit something happen against the Senators, but it's a team game, so you never kind of know if they're going to get that opportunity. But it does look like both you and I do have the Arizona Coyotes taking the win over the Ottawa Senators. So that should be an interesting one. You can take the advice as you as you will. Obviously, as we always suggest, please gamble responsibly if you decide mm-hmm. to do so. Uh, and, and while I was correct in it being an under game, I predicted 3-1 Avalanche. So it wasn't a perfect prediction. But... Hey. No one's. We're, yeah. I think. Well, we've, we've we've had games. I think where we're where we get we were on the money, but you know it's not going to happen all the time because that's that's the nature of sports betting. Yeah, and, and I do like to think that we try and get people pretty close to what it's going to be. Uh, it'll give you a general idea, but it's hockey. Uh, you know, it's it's a very unpredictable game. It's why I love it. Yeah, and that's why I love doing this segment because it kind of I can kind of track and see how we do and see how accurate we are. And I think we're, both of us are above 500. Hmm. Uh, I mean, that's good. That's definitely good. Uh, it's um, we 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 watch this team a lot. We we know a lot about them. We we have a, a decent pulse on you know fingers on the pulse of the situation. So hopefully we give you a, you know a couple pointers. Make sure you listen to lots of people if you're if you're trying to to win money though. Get lots of perspectives. Don't just uh, don't just listen to us. Yeah, including our friends at Locked On Bets. They are they are your uh, Locked On host for all things sports betting, not just hockey. They do everything: hockey, college basketball, NBA everything of the sorts. Um, if you like sports betting, they are the next podcast that we highly um, advise you want to take a listen to because they definitely have the good content. Yeah, definitely. Anyways, though, that is it for today's episode of Locked on Coyotes. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe if you get to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcast, including on youtube don't forget to interact with us on social media we're on facebook facebook.com slash locked on coyotes on instagram at locked on coyotes on twitter at lo underscore coyotes i am personally at robin underscore leano once again that is robin with a y underscore l-e-a-n-o carl pavlik is carl pavlik f-f-h interact with us dm us mention us do what you want ask us a question we can answer right back or on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.